Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we're in Fulton, California. I'm hanging out with Sam from the Electric Bicycle Center. We've got a really special one today. This is the Revolve 60 Plus. And at first I was like, do you have to be retired to ride this thing? But it's actually talking about range because it's got two batteries. Look at this thing. I mean, it's 1600 watt hours of capacity. These are 48 volt packs. There's one right here behind the seat tube. Another one that's integrated into that main tube or top tube right there really interesting even though even the tires here these are 20 by 3 inches so they're not quite full fat tire size which would be 4 inches or 4.9 you've got an extra thick like flame pattern here on the top these are kendas and uh it adds some comfort stability puncture protection we've got some fenders steel fenders front and rear uh just it, really interesting even the kickstand it's like a motorcycle stand because this thing weighs 85 pounds with both of those batteries lots of cargo capacity back here that's a longer rack than i'm used to seeing with pannier hangers and then got that front basket which is bolted to the head tube so it's not gonna tip as you steer or as you park so this is gonna be easier to load you could really you could do a lot with this thing i love that it has integrated lights four leds in the front with these heat sink blades and in the rear, we've got a light that actually has, it's got like a bunch of red LEDs across the top and then two yellow LEDs. So it has some turn signals. There's an electronic horn. We've got this flip up saddle right here with kind of a different design. A lot of times I reach in, in the back like that. This one has a pin, flips up. You can reach the battery pack. There's a suspension seat post, 27.2 millimeters on that and some nice springs. It's comfortable, it's capable, it's tough. But some of the things about this bike, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's basic. Some of it is basic. And you might be like, why, you know, I'm trying to be a reviewer here. And I, the trade-off is that this is actually really good price point. This is 1950. It's got a 500 watt planetary geared hub motor back there. Awesome Wellgo pedals that I like. Suspension fork with lockout, you know? And again, I'm not trying to be too critical on this, but there are some things that are a bit of a trade-off single speed drivetrain 48 tooth 16 tooth in the back okay not a lot of gears to change so good thing that you've got high capacity on those battery packs because if you if you run out of juice this thing is going to be a beast to get home i mentioned that the fenders are steel which is tough they're not going to rattle around a whole lot but this front one it's it's not really very well secured it doesn't go all the way down it's not going to block your feet very well if you're pedaling and, and water splashing up this headlight as cool as it is there's no adjustability to aim it down look it's like aimed up you're gonna have to bend that and hope that it kind of stays in in the right uh pointing in the right direction as heavy as this thing is to have mechanical brakes we've got 160 millimeter rotor up here that could have been 180 and then in the back we don't have a disc brake we have a drum brake okay that's older technology and the cable can stretch over time that's a bummer like there are some things on this that are like man that's a that's a real trade-off even the motor this is not like a buffang it's kind of a generic motor um so for me those are the trade-offs and i don't mean to be too harsh but i want to be i want to be honest with you about those trade-offs for a lot of people this is the only thing like this it's low it's easy to approach and stand over it's stable it's tough like that but some of these some of these accessories and stuff they went a little bit basic to try to get that lower price point even the saddle clamp right here you can see there's bolts on both sides i was sitting on this and it wasn't tightened down and it kind of kind of you know ratcheted backwards a little bit and then that can start to strip so you really want to make sure this thing is dialed in before you go on that long trip and that's part of why i've got sam here you run a shop where you set it up you make sure it's it's set up correctly and you've worked with revolve in the past what can you tell me about this bike sam so this bike is more like a moped than a bicycle i would say yeah you know a moped has a single ring chain as well and with that much range um you're not going to run out of juice in most cases i mean if you've got a 30 mile commute you could probably make it on this bike yeah uh, no problem um, i actually have had customers that uh, get these bikes and i've had a few different customers that say they never even use the spare battery it's almost like an emergency backup battery to get you home with that 25 amp hour um, 48 volt battery pack you've got a really good range with it. As far as the seat, that was our fault for not setting it up correctly. And again, like a moped, it's got headlight, tail light, brake light, turn signals, um, 
I did have one guy bring it back though. You mentioned it was easy to get on. This is a little bit high for him to get over his leg. And he actually traded this in on a Juice ODK 500, which oh. just has that much lower step over height. That's right, but they don't sell those anymore. They don't, it was a used one actually that we had in the shop at the time. And we did a, we did a trade for him and he gave me all kinds of great feedback. One other thing I want to point out that he did was, this is the on off switch for the battery. Yeah. And he would go to a shopping center or something, he'd come out and somebody would have pushed it on on him. Mm. So what he did was he just taped that over with some electrical tape so nobody even knew that was an on off switch there. Okay, back to some of the trade offs. Uh, there are three keys for this bike, okay? There's one for unlocking, removing that front battery, a second one, for not only unlocking the rear battery, but you have to leave it in. You have to switch that to the on position. This is a silverfish. It's kind of a bigger silverfish than I'm used to seeing. And that's how most of them are, but you're gonna get a little bit of dangling right here, or you're gonna have a key that's just off of a chain, which you have to try not to lose. So it's nice that it comes with two. And then there's another one for like a, a hub lock in the rear. I actually didn't see it on this one. So that was last year's model. And this one only comes with two, but again, he's making improvements. And some of the things that people were complaining about where the handlebars were too low on last year's model. Yeah. So we raised, raised those up and they're also complaining that the brakes weren't sufficient for the speed that the bike did. Yep. So with that feedback, the bike gets improved on the next generation and that is the second generation. You'll notice that the bars are higher. Uh, brakes weren't improved and he had a conversation with me about that. I think the next batch of bikes coming will have the improved brakes. That's something that Is the needs. price gonna go up? You know what, that's up to him as far as how good of a brake he puts on there it might affect the overall bottom line of the price. Yeah, yeah, so I think this is the first time I've ever been so aggressive with being like, oh man, on, on certain things, kind of just to be playful and stuff. Because when the price is this good, I don't know of anything even remotely like this you know, this one has like these cool foot pegs so you can maybe put a passenger, but I don't see a weight rating back here. You know, I was just reviewing the Rad Runner the other day mm -hmm. and it has a throttle and it has a hub motor and the, these these motors, they get a mechanical advantage with the smaller wheel size. So it was similar in a lot of ways, but it didn't have this much battery capacity. I think these lights are actually kind of an upgrade. It didn't have turn signals or the horn or anything and it didn't have a suspension fork. So for me, with the comfort, that nice comfortable saddle, this is that flip up lever I was talking about that I'm more accustomed to. So now he, he uses a side pin one. There's a lot here to really like. And I wanna call out as well, this one's got that nice chain guide, so it's not gonna bounce off. And he, he seemed to switch it out. So now you just have a guard on one side. But with single speed drivetrains, it's not like the chain falls off that much, but look how close that is to the, the fender right here. There's, th this is unique. This is really something special and I, I actually like it, but I want people to recognize some of the trade-offs. Um, Sam, I, do you have to have both batteries in to run this thing? No, you can run it on either battery and you, or you could have both batteries on simultaneously and they're gonna drain simultaneously. Hmm. So you can run that one dead and then turn this one on. I'm gonna point out something else to you right now though, Court. In order to charge the front battery, you have to remove the battery mm. and the charger is down here. So you, you get can't two charge chargers with the bike as well because these are different charger ports. So it comes with two chargers. We didn't bring the chargers today, but one is the single pin, which would plug into here. Yep. And the other one is the one that plugs into the side. It's like the triple. Right the, yeah, it's a, exactly right. Yeah, so two chargers. And coming back to value, for me, it's like, man, like two chargers, two sets of keys, two. I, it would be nice if both batteries charged by plugging into one location on the frame so you wouldn't have to always take them off. Although it is a good idea to kind of store these batteries in a cool dry location, maybe take them off the bike if you're gonna to try to move this thing. Carrying this with a car is gonna be really tough. These big tires, maybe not gonna fit in, in all the different kinds of bike racks and stuff for cars. Hanging it from the top is you're gonna need a crossbar adapter and then you're dealing with this suspension seat post. It's unique. I think this would, would really work well as a get around town bike and almost like, yeah, like a moped or car replacement. And being uh, an electric bicycle with pedals and stuff means you can ride on a lot of the paths. You don't have to ride with traffic, which could be a bit more dangerous and stressful. However, technically this goes like 22 miles per hour. That's what the website says. And I was kind of like, Okay, that's not really a class two. Maybe they, they they boosted it or something because they wanted to account for the heavier weight of the bike and maybe the heavier driver. Technically, you're, you're kind of blurring the lines there. And so I want to be honest about that too. Flat rubber grips. This one, the whole grip is the throttle. It's not a half twist like a lot of other electric bicycles that we see. Coming back down the tires, we got extra thick 12 gauge spokes, 36 hole on these. This is the controller box down here. 
see all the wires and stuff kind of running to it. That's something we've seen on a lot of the, the older folding bikes that are especially um, fat tire ones like that. They externalize the controller, which makes the batteries a little bit cheaper to replace. For me, Revolve's actually been around for a while. I've reviewed a bunch of their stuff. They have like a chopper bike and, you know, they're all kind of unique and fun. So I really like that. Uh, even if you do have some trade-off with mechanical disc brakes and stuff, those are a little bit easier to tighten yourself just to, to tune up over time. Quick release on the front, I wanted to point that out. And then we do have preload adjust on that suspension as well as the lockout. So, you know, you can actually set this up for more weight up front and it's not like that suspension's gonna get maxed out quite as easily. Another trade-off for me is this five magnet cadence sensor back here. So you can see the magnetic dots that pass the sensor. Uh, most of the newer electric bikes that I've been reviewing, they have, you know, six or most of them actually have 12 magnets. So it's a little bit higher resolution. It means you don't have to pedal for as long before it starts. And on a bike that only has one gear, one speed, it'd be nice to have more magnets because then the motor would kick in faster. Thankfully, you can override pedal assist with the throttle at any time. So a lot of these things are kind of accounted for, but they're kind of doubled up. It's like having two keys and two chargers and there's just, there's more to this bike, but, and, and I am complaining about it, but it's it's hard to feel bad about it when you've when you've got such a good value. That kickstand down there, I wanna point out that you've, you've almost gotta kind of release it with this little pedal switch thing right here. And we'll show that a little bit later when we actually go for a ride. I like that the, the lights are wired in and they aren't like some, kind of cheaper external disposable battery design. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on uh, the bike at this point. So you need to switch this rear battery to on and then press the power button right there. And then we can press the power button on the pretty basic LED display panel console thing. A bit of a reach to get to it, uh, to change modes from low, medium, or high because of this extra button pad thing. We got lights, turn signal, so I'm gonna turn on the turn signal in the back. You can see that yellow light. So it's like a single yellow LED. We turn on the lights. We've still got the turn signal going on, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven red LEDs. This is a nice light, but it's a little bit exposed. You know, if the bike tips or gets bumped into in the back, it's not quite as tucked in as some of the other ones. And especially if you had a big bag laying on top. So be careful. Or if you have that one and your jacket's hanging over the rear light, it's not gonna do any good. That's, I always wear this helmet that has a light built into the top just for extra safety. Here's that headlight and look, it's shining right up into my eyes. It should be like down here, right? That's what I was saying. So you kind of just bend that forward, maybe get the, the help of a shop or something to do that. A little electronic beeper, right? That's very moped. And that's kind of it. We've got four dots indicating your battery charge level, 25% steps. There's no speedometer, there's no trip distance. There's, there's really just, it's pretty basic. It's pretty basic and that's one of the areas they're probably saving some money um, as well. But I do love that both brake levers, even though these are mechanical and even though you have a drum brake, which isn't quite as, I mean, why don't you tell me, Sam, what are the trade-offs with the drum brake compared to disc brakes? So the old Rocky Mountain Band brakes, I think they came out in like the Model T era probably. And if you have them adjusted properly, you can actually lock up that rear wheel. Okay. But you want all the braking powers in your front. You want to have a good front brake for the most part. Um, I want to address something else on this bike. Like who is interested in buying this bike? Who would be, and I will tell you who's coming and bought the bike. Yeah, and why me. do you carry it? I mean, you, this yeah. is, you carry So these. the last guy that came in and bought this bike had just gotten a DUI and he needed to get to work. Mm -hmm. So he came in and he was like, I got to get an electric bike. And he was checking out some electric bikes and he rode this and he was like, man, this is like an electric motorcycle almost. Yeah. I'm not even wanting to pedal. I just want to ride this thing 12 miles to work and back every day. You're not going to get flats, you know? Yeah, and the other guy that came in and bought these, he actually came in to look at a scooter. There was a product that we used to carry called the um, the Gigabyte Groove. Oh yeah. So it's like a scooter and I remember he, that. he ran a, um, a company down in Baja with a charter boat and they were wanting these scooters so when they came ashore, the tourists then could like take off on the scooters and go explore the town. Yeah. When he saw this, he was like, dude, that rocks. I want two of those. And he's emailed me back and say how much the people enjoy these riding around down in Baja. You Wonderful. Know, wider tire, you can get into areas maybe that are a little bit rougher yep. and uh, it's worked out well for them. So that's just a couple examples of who rides this. If these have been holding up in Baja or you know in these other places, that's that's good to hear. Yeah, and I was actually going to test this bike. This does have three levels of pedal assist. Uh -huh. Rarely are you going to use your pedal assist because again, it's a single speed. So on the lowest level of pedal assist, your cadence is going to pretty much match the speed of what you're comfortable with the single speed transmission. Yep. 
I predict that this bike will go 100 miles if you're riding without the throttle on level one pedal assist. I could see that. Absolutely, and with throttle, I think it's called the 60 plus because the manufacturer's claiming you can go 60 miles without having to pedal this bike. I would actually estimate 75. Like I have a special math formula, so I think it's like 1680 watt hours and you divide it by 20. Again, this potentially goes 22, but that's a rough estimate with a throttle the whole way and my my mouth was saying 75 or 80. So we usually do plus. two miles per amp is what we say if you're just gonna be using the throttle. Yeah. So we've got a 10 amp hour battery using the throttle, you're gonna maybe go 20 miles. If you've got a 40 amp hour battery, you can double that. Okay, thank yeah. you, Sam. So this is good. This is, it's actually, it's not set up right now with the seat as high as I would like for pedaling. And Sam's exactly right. I was using the throttle mostly to get over here. It does feel pretty solid. Got that really beefy main tube and a supporting, that's almost like a down tube down there, right? That's gonna keep the frame from flexing a lot, which is important if you've got that rear rack loaded up. I really wish they had a stamp that give you a weight rating on there. I really, you know, it'd be nice if that light was aimed a little bit better. These are all, mostly these are things that you can take care of. And you actually told me that you tightened up the brakes on this one over here. Yep. Was that just from test rides or cable straps? Yeah, or no, what? no, you, you gotta have it set up right. This bike wasn't actually set up right, and I apologize for that. That okay. bike is set up great. It was last year's model. This one we just got in. We actually had a guy that wanted to buy two of these. He came in and picked up one. He was coming back for the second one, and we haven't gotten it fully finished up. But we're out here reviewing it today and giving uh, Revolve a little bit of exposure. Yeah, maybe we should just get out there. We've gone through pretty much everything. I'm going to do that little, you know, there's this little kick piece right there that sort of locks it in. There are wheels so you can scoot this thing around even yeah, with the kickstand so down. That kickstand is like what they used to have in uh, on old British bikes like BSAs and Nortons and Matchless and AJSs. These are all old British style motorcycles. And in the old days, they used to have what are called write-off stands. And that's huh. reminiscent of an old British bike with a write-off stand. That's so you can just ride and the stand sews itself? Well, what you can or? do is, is you can kick that little lever back, yep, yep. you sit on your bike, get your motorcycle running, and then you just kind of bump forward and the rear wheel hits the ground as you let your clutch off and you're right off, right off stand. Sweet. Everybody from Europe is gonna like relate to that. They're gonna love it. Chime in with your feedback and comments, guys. I love to hear it. Well, let's do it, guys. Um, I'm gonna hop on this thing, cruise around for a second, and then I'll come back and meet you, okay, Sam? Sounds good. So I'm just kinda, that seat. oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm just kinda scooting along like this, wheeling this thing, getting ready to cruise out. Oh, oh boy. We go so I'm pedaling right now hoping that the pedal assist would start and nothing seems to be happening I'm I'm kind of I'm not really sure I'm trying to get it to activate there we go there we go so I think with just those five magnets it's not really enough magnets to start as quickly as I'm used to it takes a little bit longer or a little bit higher speed to get those magnets passing there we go oh yeah See that fender flapping around a little bit. That's what I was talking about. A little bit of rattling going on. There we go. And we're doing okay. You know, that's single-handed braking with that front 160 millimeter mechanical disc brake. Even though it's a little bit smaller than I'd like and it's not hydraulic, it still gets the job done in, in large part because of the smaller diameter uh, wheels there. And that's the seat flipping forward that I was talking about because that those bolts aren't tightened down uh, as much as they really should be. So, oh, and then there's a, be a nice shot of that rear brake. Drum brake back there. Okay, I'm gonna hop on again and do a, uh, there we go. A little throttle action back to Sam. Okay, here we go. Nice, and it is a variable speed throttle. So if I just twist it a little bit, go nice and slow, feels like I'm under control. And then if I want to, I can juice it. Oh, I'm a little bit reluctant because my seat's all messed up. There we go. I feel like it's probably pretty stable too. Yeah, there we go. I'm a little bit reluctant to do that because my seating position isn't super stable. Uh, it looks like our our light is, we getting, what happened here is that the light is a little bit loose and the fender's a little bit loose. So this one, I think we just built it up real quick to go out for our test ride. Sam, I'm gonna park this one. So Sam's looking pretty good on this thing. Really easy to put your feet down to stabilize. I would definitely raise the seat up a little bit more. 
Look at that light. It's... Break. There's the drum break. So there, you know, it took a little bit longer to do it. Did you do both breaks? I did do both breaks. Yeah. Okay. And it didn't lock up, so we just came to a stop. Very nice, Sam. Okay, let's move over this direction a little bit. Yeah, and when I ride this bike, I'm usually just, it's got that full grip throttle and I'm, I'm riding it like a motorcycle. I'm riding it like, uh, I wouldn't, I'm not, this is more like a motorcycle to me than it is an electric bike. The and you ride motorcycles. Yep. You've, you know, you've got yep. that background. This looks really good. I, we don't know the full weight capacity on it, but I'm guessing it's pretty, it's pretty beefy. I mean, especially with these pegs back here. I could see people at Burning Man maybe getting this or like the, the gentleman you were talking about where it's like, I, I just really want a little moped, something that's affordable that's going to get me to work and back. Sure, exactly right. And it'll, it'll, uh, that'll work for you in the interim while you're waiting for your license or maybe you've got uh, maybe some uh, disabilities that uh, you want that long range and this, this is going to afford that to you. You guys, that's the Revolve 60 Plus, kind of a fun one, something unique. And thanks for speaking openly with me about Absolutely. the pros and cons on this. For the yeah. full written review, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. I do want to point out that I noticed it's got mirror uh, threaded eyelets. I, I don't think the other one does, but uh, it's nice to see them here. Sam, you've got both of these and you might even have the newest version. Keep up the good work. It's always fun to see something, something different and I think actually pretty cool. So love you guys, ride safe. We'll see you next time.